Hello everyone, Dr. Letterman here, and I'm here to show you how to shape obocane. So let's get started. So in front of me, I have an array of things. I've got my soaking obocane, which has been in here for about 15 minutes. I've got my 600 grit sandpaper. I've got my brand new razor blade, my rigati folding knife, and the main event, which is this right here, this is my shaper handle and my shaper tip. I could take this out and switch it out with another tip um, if I wanted to. And if you're curious, right now I have my Gilbert minus one tip in here. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my piece of cane that has been soaking and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bend this around my finger. Now, as I do this, I wanna be careful not to break it. So I'm gonna start really gentle, um, just so I can see if it's ready. And as I do that, get that going, and it comes together real nicely, and I'm gonna just press with my thumb and index finger um, to bring the two sides together. And I wanna be careful not to press right in the center because if I do, um, what's gonna happen is the whole thing's gonna crack and I'm gonna have to start all over. All right, so we are ready to go. Now I'm gonna grab my knife and I need to cut off some of the sides of this because if I try to put this on my shaper tip, it's not gonna fit. So I'm just gonna take my rigati knife and just like I'm like, paring an apple or something like that. I'm just gonna use my thumb as a brace. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just gonna grab just a little bit off so you can see it's not um, straight anymore. I'll do that for this side as well. And um, you don't wanna take too much, but just enough that it'll fit between these two ears. So as I do that, there we go, it now fits. And Every shaper handle is different. This particular one, uh, the way I work it is I twist this counterclockwise and it loosens these two uh, arms that come up and secure the cane. There's some that have it on the bottom. So it just depends. This part will be just a little bit different for you, um, but it does take a little bit of coordination and practice to get better at this. So as I do this, I'm just gonna set this on here. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that this is completely uh, centered on my uh, tool. So once I get this centered, I'm gonna bring the top part on and I'm gonna check here and make sure that it's centered. And it looks like it is. So now I'm gonna hold it and bring the top, or these arms, up to the top. And then I'm just gonna twist and tighten. And once it's really tight, I'm ready to go. Um, I will always just double check to make sure that the piece of cane is centered on this, um, should it not be. And it seems to be pretty centered as you can see. So now I'm ready to get started with my razor blade. So one important thing to note is you're gonna want to hold on to this right here. And what that does is ensures that it's not gonna move around as you're shaping. So the next part is I'm gonna place this right on my breastbone so that um, it is secure in uh, its placement and it's not gonna move around. Some people will start on the table. There is a danger that you could break off the ears. So right here, it's right where my uh, sternum is. It's very, very um, strong in that spot. So I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm going to start from the top. And when I start from the top, what I'm actually doing is not going all the way down to the middle. I'm just taking a nice layer off. You can see just a small layer. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. As I go through, now I am ready to get to the metal. So for this part, I'm actually going to start 
down towards the end and I'm gonna slowly gather more pieces off of the cane. And you can see I get closer and closer and as I get to the metal, I'm able to go much quicker. Uh, and then I just kinda go across and find those little bitty pieces which are still hanging out there. The big thing to think about while you're doing this is you want to keep your razor blades straight. Anytime you turn it like this, you will have some trouble uh, when you start to tie because you will have taken too much off on the sides. And when you do that, the reed is not gonna seal. So if you have leaky reeds, this could be a big reason why. So this feels pretty good. And the way I can check it is I can run my finger against it and it should feel really smooth. And then I can also look at it really closely. And as I do that, I'll notice that I don't see any um, of the cane going over onto the um, metal itself. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna get to the other side. Again, I'm starting at the very bottom, moving forward as I get little pieces off. And the reason we do this is that if you try and get all of it off at once, you might have some of it splinter and it will end up, uh, again, creating a piece of cane that is not going to seal when you start to tie. And at that point, it seems pretty smooth. It sounds pretty smooth. And I'm going to look at it and I'll show you all on the camera that it's a lot smoother than it was when I started. And the last thing I do, and that's the one thing I haven't used just yet, that is my sandpaper. This is a last step that I do. I found, find that it really kind of helps fine tune what I've just done. So I take it and I hold it in my hand and I'm just gonna do like three or four across get that done and then another and I am ready to go and we have our finished piece of cane.